Good evening, everybody. Amen. Let's all stand for prayer, please. <clears throat> Doug, would you open us in prayer? Amen. Okay. Well, Rhonda is going to come lead us in a couple songs. Page birthday. Robert Sandiford? Was it your birthday a couple of weeks ago? Would you please stand?
going to get down to business tonight. I talked too much this morning, so I'm just going to keep quiet tonight. Anyone have any prayer requests or, or short testimony? No, we need to pray for Joe Perez. Continue prayer for Michael Saul and, and Arian. And I'm sorry? Albert. Okay. I rem- yeah, I remember him. Yep. Okay. And Miss Foster. Yep. Miss. Remember Miss Foster. Jerome. And Jerome. The Ledgers. The Blacks. The Blacks. Brogdon's. Brogdon's. <laughs> Pray for Greg to bring the word tonight. Remember uh, Mr. and Miss Popa? Yep. Yeah, Robert's wife Camille texted me this afternoon that he's gone into a coma. Okay. He's trying to stay in Vermont. He's talking to his ear. Yep. Okay, pray for pray for Jim. Okay. Rhonda has an unspoken. Doug? Yeah, that last song we sang. I'd like to change that to He Abides in Me. Right. Yes, He Abides with us, but He Abides in us. And I, that's what makes it cool. I think one of the first verses he does say in me, and then the rest of it rest says of it with me. With yep. Yep. <laughs> Jorge? Unspoken? Okay. All right, let's stand for prayer. Stephen, would you lead us in prayer, please? Lord God of heaven and earth, we thank you for tonight, Father. Yes, we we just come before you with praise and adoration, yes. Lord. And Lord, you've heard each request that was made here tonight, Father. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're a God that cares, and that you're a God that listens, and you're a God that answers prayer, Lord Jesus. I just lift up each one of those that was named, Lord God, that is ill or in the hospital or sick, Lord God, for your very best for them, Lord God, for speedy recovery, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, only you bring healing in your wings to each one of them, Lord God, that each one needs you, Lord God. We ask for those that are away from us right now, for the ledgers and Jerome, Lord God, that you be with them, Father, and you take care of them and everything they're doing throughout the day and the evening, Lord God, and bring them home safely to us, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, for Doug tonight, Father God, that you comfort him and help him through this loss that he's going to go through, Lord God, on this prayer partner and accountability partner of so many years, Lord God. We know where somebody's going this day, Lord God, but it's hard to part with them sometimes, Father, and give them up to you, Father. So I just ask that you would help Doug through this special time in his life, Lord Jesus. Lord, let your anointing be on Greg tonight, yes. Father. Yes. Oh, Father, yes. use him tonight, Lord God. Speak through him and help him, Lord God, in his thoughts yes. and his speech tonight, Lord God, as only you can do, Father. Lord, I just lift up each person here, Father God. You know the needs of each one here, Lord God. Each one has different needs, Father, and I lift up each person here to you. For those that are saved, that you help them in the journey, Lord Jesus, and in their day and night. And, Lord, for those that are unsaved, Father, I ask, Lord God, that you make a way for each one to come to the saving knowledge of knowing you here as Lord and Savior. And as always, we're going to give you all the praise and all the glory in your precious name, Lord. Amen. 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 Okay. Can I have the ushers, please? Thank you for bringing us here all together tonight to worship yes, in your Lord. name. Thank you. Please bless this offering. Bless all those that are that can give. Bless those that want to give but can't. Dear Lord, we thank you for such a beautiful day today, and, and thank you for the word that you've given us this morning and the word that you have for us tonight. And just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Okay, Miss Rhonda's going to come lead us in another song. Miss Rhonda? Page for Greg to come share with us what God has for us tonight. Greg? Amen. Thank you.
looking forward to you to speak a little more, Steve. <laughs> Give me a little more time, but <laughs> praise God. Good evening, everyone. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. It's been a beautiful and blessed day today. We're going to get right into the word. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 6, verses 6 through 14. This long pause as I'm waiting for everyone to stand up in reverence to God's word. Praise God. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members are instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin sin shall have no dominion over you, for ye are not under the law but under grace. Father, I thank you, I bless you, and I praise you tonight, Lord. I pray, Father, that you will open up the ears and and open up the eyes of everyone's hearts, Father, so they may see and they may hear what the Spirit is doing in this hour, Father. I pray that if there's anyone unsaved here today, Father, that they will will, uh, understand the importance of their salvation, Father, that that price that Jesus paid, that, that tough price that Jesus paid for us, Father, that he freely paid for us. Father, I pray that we will just walk in it. I pray that each and every person here will consider the words that are being said today and a blessing will come forth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you for standing for that prayer. I know it went a little longer, but sometimes the Holy Spirit comes along and says, keep going. Praise God. All right, we're talking about sin nature today. A lot of times uh, we do a lot of bad things and we wonder why we do that. You ever, uh, uh, you, you see people, they call themselves kleptomaniacs. They take something and, and they say, oh, I don't know why I keep doing it. I don't know why I keep doing it. And they keep doing it and doing it. And then they say, that's it. I'm not going to do it anymore. Or when you're drinking, that's it. I'm not going to do it anymore. But then later on, they're like, the temptation just gets them. And they got to do it. And then they say, why do I do this? I don't understand why I do it. It's sin nature. It goes back from Adam and Eve. We, know, we all know the story of Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve, and uh, he gave them dominion over everything. Over, he, could, he named the animals. He could tell animals, you, go over there and do that. You, do that. You, do this. Bird, come down here and sing. We had dominion over the earth. And Eve had a conversation with the devil. The devil came in, you know, and saw us and, hey, you know, uh, why are you not eating of that fruit? He said, because it's forbidden. If we eat it, we'll, we will surely die. He said, you won't surely die. You will not surely die. He's lying to you. He's saying that uh, you will die, but I'm telling you, you will not die. You will be a god just like him. Now, he's telling the half truth. They died a spiritual death, but not a physical death. And the shame is that some of us are still talking to the devil. The devil... As I was speaking about with the dominion, that's ours. It's like somebody's stealing a, you know, people have a, a conversation with the death and they, with, with the devil and they say the devil is this and, well, the devil is powerful and this and that. That's like somebody, and, and they brag on them, it's, it's like somebody's stealing your car, a nice car, and they go driving by, oh, that's a nice car. You know, that's my car. That's our dominion that he stole. That's ours. We should be upset over it. 
But sometimes we sit here and we have conversations with the devil. I seen, uh, I heard there was a piece of paper on the ground somewhere where someone said God is the devil and the devil is God. Some people are having conversations with the devil. You ever heard that expression, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me? Can't keep blaming the devil. We already have evidence of what the devil has done and we should turn away. But a lot of times we just sit there and have conversations with the devil. You want to know if you're having a conversation with the devil? If it's contrary to the word of God, you're having a conversation with the devil. Period. So, he, he convinced Eve to eat the apple or, or the fruit, as the word says. Eve ate it. It's like, see, you didn't die. So she goes over to Adam, and Adam eats it. And you notice they didn't realize that they were unclothed until Adam ate it. He was the head, and he didn't, he didn't say, no, I'm not going to do it. He, he went right along with it. Because a lot of times, well, the truth is, even with the lesson today, like with Solomon, Women have an influence over us. They came from us. They came from the rib. They have an influence over us. So the devil knowing that, he's going to go a little round away and he's going to go to the woman and say, you know, let me get her and she can influence him. So Adam ate it and they both ate it and then they, uh, they knew they had no clothes and God came along and said, you know, where are you, Adam? Where, uh, where are you? And so why are you covering up? He said, because I'm, I, have, I don't have clothes. And God said, how do you know you don't have clothes? Did you eat from it? And he said, uh, the woman did it. The woman did it. The woman that you gave me did it. So immediately when, he, when sin came in, you know, one thing with sin is you always have to tell another sin to cover up for that sin. And it always grows. It's the little, it's, it's the little things. The little, uh, uh, it's, it's the little, little sins and the little things, you know. You're never going to be overtaken with something big. It starts with something small. You think, if I tell a lie, it's no big deal. I'm not hurting anybody. But that's what set you down that path. Before you know it, you're off somewhere and you wake up in, in some kind of drug house or some alcohol house, and you're like, how did I get here? It started with that first sin. That's why it's important that you can't listen to the devil when God tells you not to sin. You just don't do it. You cut it off from the very beginning. So then comes, uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, as Adam tried to cover it, as he covered himself up, that's what we do when we sin. We cover ourselves up. Talking about King David. As soon as he found out that uh, Uriah the Hittite's wife was pregnant, first thing he tried to do was cover it up. That's what we do when we sin. Try to cover it up. Try to cover it up. And sometimes you go straight to God and you confess it. You can get rid of it right there, but we try to cover it up. And he started off with him sleeping with another man's wife. And then it elevated to him having a man killed. A mighty man of God killed. He brought him in and he said, you know, go home and sleep with your wife. This man was such a mighty man of, of valor. He said, I, if my men are out there fighting, I'm not going to go out there and fight. I'm not going to go out there and sleep with my, with my wife while the men are out there fighting. I'm going to sleep here at the door. I'm not going to go there. And David realized he had a problem, still had to cover up that sin, and had that man slaughtered, had him killed, gave him his papers to, to give to the, uh, to the person that's, that's in charge of the armies and said, when a the, when the when, when battle gets fierce, just pull away and have that man killed, all to cover up sin. Now, when Adam and Eve did sin, that became the fall of man, and we had now a sin nature. And our dominion was given away, done, and now we have a sin nature. And we think through this sin nature, a lot of times we think, oh, you know, it's, 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 it's always just me. But it's something, it's something that can be cured, but it is us. But it's something that happened a long time ago. But like in Genesis 3.15, God, as soon as that happened, God said, bam, I have a solution for the problem. And it is Jesus Christ. And Jesus came and he paid that price. But there's people who are still living in, with the sin nature. And the sin nature, uh, let me give you an example. 
Everybody ever heard of that? Uh, everybody must have heard of this story. It's a little different every time. It's like the scorpion and the frog. Some people say the scorpion, the alligator, and they say all different things. Anyway, the story goes, the scorpion wanted to get across a large body of water. And he says, uh, hmm, I can't get by that. Hey, frog, can I get a ride over there to the uh, other side? And the frog says, I'm not going to let you give me a ride. You're going to kill me. That's what you do. And the scorpion said, no, 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 don't worry about it. Why would I do that? Why, why, why would I do that? If I do that, we're both going to die. I don't want to die. And the frog said, you know what? That makes sense. I'm going to give him a ride. And as they're going halfway over, the stoked scorpion stings him. And the frog says, what'd you do that for? Now we're, all gonna, now we're both going to die. The scorpion says, it was in my nature. Now as they're going down, I'm noticing scorpion saying, why, why did I do that? But it was in his nature. If a lion was to come up to one of us and growl, we wouldn't say, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Because we realize that it's in his nature as a predator to attack us. So our first instinct is to either run or you know, find some way to survive. And it's the same thing with sin nature. We can go to these AA meetings, these self-help books, these, uh, uh, they get into interventions, everybody get together and they say, oh, uh, I've done wrong. Well, you, well you, you need to do this and you need to do that. And, you need to, and, and, and we try to cure it. We're going to AA and they say, uh, and no offense to anyone in AA, but uh, they say, uh, you have to admit that you're an alcoholic. You're not an alcoholic. You was created by God in his own image and likeness. You're not an alcoholic. They tell you to confess something that you're trying to get away from. How are you going to get away from something that you're confessing? As a man thinketh, so shall he be. And so 10, 15 years, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you're doing great. You're not doing anything. You're not doing any drugs. You're not drinking. You're not womanizing. You're not uh, covering other people's stuff. You're not doing violence. You're doing good. You haven't stole anything. But eventually, that sin nature rises up. And you say, how? Why did I do this? Why can't I stop? Just like with the scorpion. It's in the nature. It's in the sin nature. And there's only one way to, steal, to deal with that sin nature, and that's with Jesus Christ. He's the only one who's going to break that curse. And a lot of times we're going to keep going around the mountain doing the same thing over and over and over again because you're a slave to sin. We've all been there. I've been there. I have uh, was drinking, and one time I said, you know what, I'm going to quit, and I was doing real good for about a week or two. And friends, the devil will use your best friends to get you back. They were like, here, look, you know, everybody was coming up with beer, even broke people who never have money. Before when I was drinking, I had to spend my hard-earned money to get it. But when I quit, everybody who was broke all of a sudden wanted to be nice. You know, I was like, when did you get a job? When did you get something? And he, the devil will use anybody and give them whatever resources to bring you back there. And that sin nature will rise up like a lot of times that nature will try to lay dormant, especially when you come in church, it wants to lay dormant. Because if any of the preachers see it, we're going to cast that spirit out. It lays dormant, and you're feeling real good. But one day when the time comes, bam, it's going to come out. Amen. And it's going to come out at the wrong time. Yeah. A lot of times, too, you've got to remember that there's also generational curses. Mm -hmm. The devil's been around from the beginning of us and he knows our fathers our grandfathers our great-grandfathers someone once told me check in your in your past check with your family check with your father check with your grandfather check with however you know see what kind of things that they've had and the things I'm dealing with or have dealt with was in my family high blood pressure diabetes uh, alcoholism drugs all those things. See, he knows us. If you think that, you know, not accepting Jesus Christ, that you can just avoid it by yourself, then you're a target that's easily going to be hit. 
because he knows what you want. He knows what, he knows what your father wanted. He wanted, knew what your mother wanted. He knew everything. He's been attacking us from the very beginning, and he's going to attack us until, we're, until we die and through us, and somehow he's going he's to come after our children. I know we're all taught to protect our children and our family, but if we don't have Jesus Christ, they're targets too. How, do you, how would you feel if you seen like a, a, your kid walking around as a baby and there's a monster over you? Well, there's a monster over him right now. And you think you can protect them? You can't protect them, not unless you have Jesus. But the good thing about Jesus is when he died and he went down into hell for three days and, and on the third day, what was that, uh, Colossians 2.15, on the third day, you said it, Stephen, on that one? 215 on the third at, at, when he was crucified on the cross he went down into hell paid that paid our price went down into hell yes. was was you know took on all the abuse down there from the devil and demonic spirits they all attacked him and he took all of it for us but on the third day the holy spirit came upon him and he, as the word says, made an open show of them triumphing and them in it. That means all the angels seen it, all the demons seen it, everyone in the spiritual realm seen it. It's like, um, you ever hear of that fight? I believe it was Muhammad Ali and Frazier. They had a fight during the, uh, during the war. What is it, the Vietnam War? It was a big fight. And... Uh, Everybody in the war, everybody in the Vietnam War stopped. Everybody laid down their guns just to see this fight. Believe it or not, they laid down their guns just to see this fight. Then it was over, they picked it back up and went to war. It was just like that. Every angel, every demon, everybody's seen it. Everybody knows what Jesus did down there. He conquered him, got our dominion back, which was stolen, got the five keys to the kingdom of God, Death and life, conquered death, yes. loosening, binding, and all of those things. He stripped them of it, the word of God says. He stripped it from the devil, rose up. Because everybody think about Jesus like he's just this little calm, you know, Jesus. Oh, look at baby Jesus, like on Bart Boucher. Look at baby Jesus. He's just, oh, he's just, you know, nice. And they, they like, he allowed, when they crucified, he allowed them to do that. He could have called down the legions of angels. But Jesus is a conqueror. He's our big brother. He's a conqueror, and he, con he conquered all evil. He conquered, or he conquered the devil and every demonic spirit. That's why when it says in the word here that uh, every time he came up with somebody with spirits, they got scared. Oh, Jesus, what have thou to do with us? Have you come to torment us before our time? Those same demons that try to torment us are afraid because they know who Jesus is. He was around from the very beginning as the word says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was in the beginning. Yes. So, when we go through these attacks, when we go through these attacks, we always can go to Jesus. But the attacks, a lot of times, we can't blame on the devil. Jesus defeated him. He still has some over us. He has dominion over those who don't accept Jesus. Once you accept Jesus, the chains are broken. You're in bondage right now without Jesus. A lot of times you don't really want to come forth, but hey, do you really want to be, do you really want to keep making bad decisions? I don't know who I'm talking to today, but how does it feel when you make a big mistake and you have to go home and look your kids in the face and they look at you like, you did it again, Dad? You got to go to your mother, your father, and they're like, you did it again, Dad? Why can't, why, 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 why do you keep doing this, Dad? And you have to sit there and, and apologize to him and explain to him. Or you have to go to your wife and tell her, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't, I don't know what I was doing. I don't know what this is. There's no control. Because there is no control. That devil stole your dominion. And now he's coming to steal your life. But until then, you're in bondage. You're in slavery. And it's time to open up your eyes. Because the time is running out. 
And then, and then we always go to, yeah, I love these therapists. We go to them and, and psychiatrists. We lay down and say, hey, it's a mommy issue or it's a daddy issue. It's a textbook that they go down and they just ask you questions. It's like, why don't you just tell me what's wrong with me? You know, and they sit there and they ask you some certain questions. They get in your business. And then they tell you, according to what you tell them, what, what, what's wrong with you. And meanwhile, do you know those therapists and those psychiatrists, when they're done, they go and see a psychiatrist and therapist? And meanwhile, thousands of dollars later, you're back where you started. And you got to go back to them. And it's a repeated thing. It's just like in a hospital. You go in there. They don't treat you for the problem anymore. They give you, they, they, they give you something to just keep you going so they can keep getting your money. Meanwhile, we have the great physician. We have, we have the person that can save your life, the person that will give you the mind of Christ. Everything you need in the world is right here in the Bible. Amen. You spend money for, uh, uh, so you can go on for diets. Oh, I gotta lose weight. Diets right in here, the Daniel fast. The Daniel diet. You uh, go there to, to you, you go and buy these little love romance books and. You know, the greatest love story ever told is right here in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who do you know that would give their only begotten son to save, to save someone else and go through the things he went through? Everything you need is right here in the word, but we would rather spend our hard-earned money to go and find everything else out, to find out what this person says, that person says, this person says. And then thousands of dollars later, you end up here. Listen to what God says. When in the beginning, you could have went right straight to God in the beginning. Amen. But here we are, by the grace of God, and we're still alive. Because all that time we were out there in the world, the devil was trying to kill us. But he didn't do it, because God kept a hedge of protection around us. Amen. God said, no, nope, 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 those are my children. And they're going to get a chance to receive me. But those chances isn't going to be isn't going to last for long. It's not going to last for eternity. You only have a certain amount of chances. We are now once we receive Jesus, we are now new creations in Christ. We are new creations. We're no longer bound by sin. All of a sudden now, whenever you go to Jesus and you ask him something according to his will, he's going to do it. He looks out for us. When, the word, when you learn the word, the word is, a, is an investment in you, and God looks out for his investment. He's going to be with you always and all the time. So what's it going to take? What's it going to take for us to finally realize that sin is just going to take us down? What's it going to take? Is it going to take our wife? Is it going to take our parents? Is it going to take our kids? Is it going to take our own life? Is it going to take your car, your house? And, you know, by the way, everything that we own is God's anyway. So when God says to you, give that car to this person, you give it. Let this person stay with you in your house. You give it. And he'll continue to bless you. But it's not yours. It's God's. That's why sometimes it, uh, I'm not going to get into the tithes and offering thing because that's a touchy subject. <laughs> Every church I've been in, it's been a touchy subject. But God just asks for 10% of your tithes and offerings. And when he asks for your 10% of your tithes and offerings, he says in his word that he's going to give you back more. This is a no-win no situation right here. This is a no-win deal right here that Jesus set up for us. But yet, we still want to go out and talk to the devil and worship the devil. You know, if you're not worshiping, if you're not putting God first, you're putting the devil first. Whether it be alcohol, whether it, you funny thing, when I first got married to my wife, I said to my wife, I said, honey, I love you, but you know, I'm gonna put God first. Yes, sir. She said, What? I can't believe you said that. Okay. And to get back at me, she said, I'm gonna put God before you. I said, that's it. And she didn't understand it. She said, oh, okay. Another quick little story. This is, this is funny, talking about dominion through Jesus Christ. 
My, my wife called me before we got married, and she was at her house, and she said, Greg, there's a, a little animal, uh, I don't know, a raccoon or something like that, in front of the, a big one, it's in front of the door, and I can't get in the house, I just came back from shopping. I said, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go up towards that animal, not too close, and I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, you animal, get out of here. She said, what? I said, just do it. So she goes, and I can hear her on the phone. In the name of Jesus, could you get out of here? I said, no, with authority. Say it louder with authority. She said, in the name of Jesus, you, get out of here. And she said, it's gone, it's gone. What do I do? I said, go in the house. <laughs> Through Jesus Christ, we have our dominion back. Through Jesus Christ, everything that was stolen from the devil is all access to us again. Getting, having Jesus Christ in our life, we are back sitting in high places with God. Amen. Who doesn't want to sit in high places with God? See, the devil will put an illusion over your face. He'll tell you that sin is fun. Drinking is fun. Smoking, is, smoking uh, drugs is fun fighting, uh, causing trouble, all that's fun. But it's an illusion. And as soon as I became saved, I looked at it and I said, because I used to go to bars with friends and we used to fight and do all sorts of stupid stuff. But now when I think about it, all the money that I spent to do that stuff, all the resources, all the scars, I even think about some of the people I hurt that I didn't know from anything. And then, and, and worst of all, there were kids, because I used to be good in sports, there were kids who used to look up to me and look up to us, and they'd want to go and do the same thing, which, even, which is even more horrible. But I was in that sin nature. I was the nicest person in the world. Like, for example, too, you ever realize that these mass murderers who are always killing people, and you see it on the news, and their neighbors always say, oh, he was the nicest person in the world. He was never bothering anybody. He always said hi. He was great. He did this and that. You can be as nice as you want. You can be a, a wonderful person. But that sin nature has a potential to do extreme damage if it's not dealt with. You might think it's something small. You might think it's nothing really big until you go do something crazy. And you're like, oh, my God, what have I done? You haven't dealt with that sin nature. You have to deal with that sin nature. And sometimes we have to keep going around the mountain over and over, get out of a place like this, hear about the word, you know, come down here, pray a little bit. Haven't accepted Jesus, but praying a little bit. And let me give you a, a detailed thing what accepting Jesus is. You have to, to accept Jesus, you have to believe that God raised him from the dead Believe that in your heart and confess that Jesus is Lord. And he's Lord and Savior. Now, Lord means master, which means you have to be obedient to him. And once you're obedient to him, and he's your master, and he's your Lord and your Savior. He can't just be your Savior. He has to be your Lord, too. Those go hand in hand. Now, believing God raised you from the dead, that's the faith. I mean, if you could believe that someone was raised from the dead... How can't you believe that God's going to give you a job? How can you believe that God's not going to heal somebody that you love, but you can't, but, but how are you saying you can believe that God was raised from the dead, but you can't believe that God can give you the job you need, or God can't heal your family member? Imagine how many people in our lives we could have saved or we could have helped if we had it, just had that faith to believe. With God and through God, each and every one of us are conquerors. We're more than conquerors yes. because God's already won the fight. Everything that Jesus did, when he came back up, he gave us back our dominion through his, in his name. He gave us the keys to the kingdom of God. He gave us authority from God. And if that wasn't enough, he gave us the comforter. Now, everybody talk about, you know, the comforter abides and the com I don't think I'm going to spell that out for you. The comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, yeah. when God said turn on the lights, he hit the lights. 
He is the power of God. All the works that Jesus did was through the Holy Spirit. Everything. And Jesus gave that to us. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name when you ask for it. All those things from the healing to miracles is all right there that we can tap into. But we don't tap into it. We would rather go to man for something. And a lot of those, and a lot of times when you go to man for things, there's always strings attached. Amen. There's no strings attached when it comes to God. I know you've heard this a million times, but uh, how many times are you going to go around the mountain? God had it set up for uh, the children of Israel when they was coming out of Egypt. He had it set up where they can go into the land of milk and honey, where they haven't dug any uh, they haven't dug any wells, they haven't built any houses, they haven't done any of it. He had it set up where as soon as they leave from Egypt, they was going to go into something already set up, fully furnished. That was a blessing of God. And all they did was murmur and complain. And then when he finally got them there, they said they were too, too afraid to go in. The scouts said, no, 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 no. They're like, they're like giants, and we're like grasshoppers in their sight. And Caleb and Joshua said, it doesn't really matter. I'm ready to go in there. We can go in there. We can defeat with God because he's seen what God did in Egypt. They've seen what God did in Egypt. So why did they get scared when they went out there? That b belief, unbelief. But God has, to say that, I say this. God has everything for us right now, and the only reason we don't have it because we're just like them, we don't, a lot of times we don't want to walk into it. We don't want to get up and walk into what God's already prepared for us. Everything's been prepared. He prepares the table in the presence of our enemies. He anointeth our head with oil. Our cup overfloweth. But you have to step up into it. And just like the children of Israel, they said, nope, shut up, Caleb and Joshua. We're going to keep going. And for 40 years, they went around and around and around. And they kept complaining. And God said that this generation will never make it into the land, into the promised land. Only those two men who had faith were able to go in there. And they went around and around until they all died off. And the next generation went in. Even Moses didn't make it in. Or Aaron. And I say that to say this. How many times are we going to go around that mountain? How many times are we going to say, God, we love you, praise you, you're this and that. And then, you know... Someone gives a call. Hey, let's uh, get out of that place, man. It's cold. Come hang out with me. And you go out. You, you, uh, you can stay at my house. It's a setup. Amen. It's a setup. God wants to establish you right here where you can get a job here. And you can set everything up here until you leave on your own terms. On your own way. Hey, wait a second. I, have, I put away enough money. I paid my tithes and offering. I put away enough money so that I can afford my own place. Because whenever you go out with some girl or some guy or some friend or some, some uh, you know, when I first got here, I, I still, I had ways, I could have went with some of my family members. But wisdom told me that eventually they're gonna act funny. You know how it is when you stay over someone's house and they're like, oh, here he goes again. So when are you gonna get that job you was talking about? When are you gonna get out the house? When are you gonna do something? Oh, Open up the refrigerator. Did you eat that? Oh. When are you going to do something? It's like, you know, and I was like, I don't even want to put a strain like that on my family. Amen. But I realized that God brought me here so he could build me up in the word. I could build up my money so he can open up doors. Let God open up that doors. Yes. Don't take any counterfeit blessings. The devil will give you a counterfeit blessing. The devil can counterfeit every gift except for love. And he will trick you that way. He will trick you. He will tell you everything. He will give you an illusion to tell you everything's fine. But it's not. It's not unless you have Jesus. Yes. Let's imagine this. With a tree, there's a big tree of all of our sins and all the bad decisions. A big tree of all of our bad decisions. And there's, you know, a branch that's lying and stealing. There's a branch of alcoholism, yeah. drugs, violence, 
Now, with these self-help groups and all of these people who try and uh, have these interventions, they'll work for a little while. You know, like, you know, that's like cutting off a branch. But that branch is going to come right back. It's going to grow back. Yes. And anybody who's had to destroy a tree before, they know they have to destroy it at the root. Yes. And the root problem is sin nature. That's right. And the only way to get rid of the sin nature is through Jesus Christ. Yes. What more do I have to say? Sometimes we have to learn the hard way. Sometimes we have to go around the mountain one more time. Sometimes we have to bump our heads one more time. Time is getting closer and it's getting near. If being in a homeless shelter is in a wake-up call, I don't know what is. This could be our last chance. You don't have to come down to this altar except Jesus. You can come to anyone later on on the side and quiet because I know a lot of times you don't want to do it in front of everyone because everyone's like, oh, you listen to this, oh, we're going to do this and that. And There's always going to be somebody that's going to come negative and tell you not to do it. Because there's people with sin nature, they don't, need, they don't mean it, but they're going to say, hey, you ever heard that, that, that uh, expression, misery loves, loves company? A lot of times people don't want to see you do good. They want to see you do just as bad as them. And it makes them feel better. So they can gossip and talk about you and make themselves feel better. But they don't realize it's not them. That's why we have to pray for our enemies. It's not them. It's that sin nature. But when you receive Christ and things get better and your life gets better, all of a sudden they're going to look at you and say, I want what he got. He's got a car now. He's got a wife that loves him. He's got a house. Things are going better. He's not out drinking with everyone, spending up all his money. How long are we going to go around that mountain? So at any time, you can go speak to any of the pastors, or you can get on your knees and tell Jesus that you love him. Romans 10, 9, 10. Look that up. Get in the word. Read the Bible. Read it while you can read it. Everything you need in the world that you need to live is right here. Why does everybody spend millions of dollars to help themselves when they can't help themselves? You ask some people to help you that can't even help themselves. There are billionaires and millionaires who are running around having a great time, and, you, and it's just an illusion. You talk to some of the millionaires and billionaires, they'll tell you life is miserable. That money, you know, they have to worry about money, and, and, and they're addicted to that money. They can't just, you know, one thing people with power want is more power. They want more money, and they want more, and, and they can't sleep at night. Oh, I got I to gotta get more, I got to get more, I got to get more. And we're sitting there looking at them like, oh, I wish I was just like them. But meanwhile, we have more than that. We have spiritual blessings. We have eternity in a good place. All right, I'm not going to go too much further. But to bring it all the way back, it's sin nature. Sin nature needs to be dealt with, or you're going to deal with it for the rest of your life. Just like problems. Either you deal with your problems, or your problems are going to deal with you. Deal with sin nature, or sin nature is going to deal with you. Look at what you do now. Look at what we all do now with sin nature, or what we've done in the past. You have no control over it without Jesus. Everybody stand, please. We can walk out this building and go on to doing what we're doing, go around that mountain one more time, or we can go into the land of Canaan. We can go into the land of milk and honey. That's promised us. But the choice is yours. Blessings and curses are in your control right now. And when you go before the judge, when you go before God, almighty God, the judge, and you're like, wow, this really is real, or wow. And he says, well, what did you do with my son Jesus? How come you didn't accept me? You have a choice at this moment. And you can't say you didn't hear it. If anybody's ready to accept Jesus, 
come to this altar? If not, I might see you online at Judgment Day. And it's going to be too late then. As you see some of us saints walking into the, into the kingdom of God, into heaven, and you see other people marching right down to hell, it's going to be too late then. Talk to somebody. Talk to a pastor. Receive Christ. You don't have to receive it in here. You can receive it outside. God's everywhere. But don't let that gift go away. That sin nature is going to be at you your whole life unless it's dealt with. Pastor Wooten, would you pray us out, please? Our Father, we thank you tonight for this precious message that's been given. Don't let it get away from us. We pray the Holy Spirit will take it and apply it to our hearts. In the night hours, you'll wake us up, dear Lord. Convicting power will seize our lives and our hearts. We're not where we need to be. Lord, we pray that thou will help every man that's here to recognize, dear Lord, the enemy's after our souls. And he's running hard after us. But, oh, God, we pray tonight. There is deliverance through the name of Jesus. Yes. We pray tonight yes. that you have your precious way. In Jesus' name we pray.